Hello everyone this is part 1 of What If Naruto Was Iron Man, and this story is made by Maverick9871, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, to see more comment down below, now let's start the intro. Naruto Uzumaki stood in the Kanoa hospital in front of his sensei Hitaki Kakashi and asked, but why can't you teach me? Kakashi sighed as he closed his book and said, look Naruto, I only put you in the Chunin exam for the same reason I put Sakura in it, for experience. I never imagined you would make it past the second round and the only reason you did was because you couldn't control your bodily functions and farted in Kiba's face. Deep down you know that was the only reason you won that match. You are not ready for the exams. I have asked another Junin to take this month and train you in chakra control since that is your greatest weakness. Perhaps after the exams are over you will have enough control so I could teach you something but I am not going to teach you anything because truthfully, no matter what I teach you, you could not defeat Neji and I will not waste my time training you since at this time you are not worth it. I will be taking Sasuke to train him since he is ready for the Chunin exams. Naruto narrowed his eyes and said, it's always about Sasuke. If you even spent half the time training me or Sakura as you do Sasuke then I might have believed you bullshit story just said but I know you never cared about either of us. All you have ever cared about is Sasuke and, as Kakashi shushined away leaving Naruto standing in the hall. Naruto said, well screw you Kakashi. I will train myself and I will fight Neji and I will beat him and then I will beat everyone until I get to Sasuke and I will leave him lying in the dirt. Even if I have to make a deal with QB to do it. As he turned and began to walk down the hall ignoring the scared looks people were giving him. As Naruto rounded the corner and neared the stairs when a hand grabbed him from an open room and yanked him into the room before slamming the door shut. Naruto who found himself getting up off the floor looked up and saw a man with brown hair and brown eyes looking at him and asked, are you really willing to do anything to defeat the Uchiha you would be willing to use the QB? Naruto asked, who are you? As he looked around the room. The man said in a commanding voice, answer the question Naruto. Does proving you're not worthless mean that much to you that you could have everyone who doesn't hate you now hate you for using it? Do you really feel that you have no options? Naruto glared and said, yeah. I have nothing to lose. Nobody cares about me and nobody would give a damn if I died tomorrow so why not? If using the damn QB that everyone hates me for is the only way anyone will ever see me as something but the dead last idiot who doesn't even deserve to live, then so be it. The man looked at Naruto for several minutes and asked, what if there was another way? A way that could cost you your life, but if you lived it would give you everything you need to succeed in life and never be the failure that everyone thinks you are. Would you be willing to take the risk? Naruto thought several seconds and nods slowly and the man said good, come to this address tonight at 8 and try not to be noticed, as he handed Naruto a business card. Naruto looked at it and read the address and thought, this is near the outside of the village where hardly anyone lives, and asked, who are you? The man said, someone who wishes to repay an old debt. Good day, as he turned and left the room. Naruto looked at the address and frowned a moment and left as well. At 8 p.m. Naruto walked up to the address and saw a two-story house that looked run down with several broken windows and Naruto looked around when a voice said, Ah Naruto. Glad you could make it. Causing Naruto to turn around and saw the man from earlier and Naruto asked, So what is it you want? The man went to the side of the house and raised the door to the cellar, went inside and said, Come on boy. I don't have all day. Naruto took one last look around and followed inside and he went down the stairs for nearly 50 feet before he came to a huge stone room and the man had his back to Naruto working at a table and said, I am sure you were wondering what I meant earlier and who I am. Well I won't tell you my name because I wish to protect my family but I can tell you what I meant. You see I know who your father was, making Naruto eyes wide. Naruto asked, who? The man chuckled and said, we will get to that in a moment. The debt I owe is to him. Before you were born I was a metallurgist and my wife was a cybernetic researcher. We both worked under the King of Snow Country researching for ways to save that country. His brother Dotu pulled both of us away from what we were working on to try and help protect the country by creating new type of armor for the ninja there. 
Since he was the brother to the king and the king had allowed his brother to help with the research in other areas, we believed he had the right to ask us to do it so we began to work on creating just that. A new type of armor that would help protect the people of the land of snow. We discovered though that Dotu was planning to take his army and kill his brother taking over the country so we took as much of our data as we could and fled from the country. We had almost escaped him completely but his men caught us a month after we had left our homeland and captured us and took our data. As they were preparing to take us out of fire country your father happened to be passing by and my wife took a chance and screamed for help. He came and attacked the men who had us prisoner and freed us but one man took a small portion of our research and made it back to snow country. Naruto yawned as he started to get sleepy and he asked, what happened after he saved you and who was he? Since you talk about him in past tense does that mean he is dead? The man said, yes. He died the same night you were born. I don't know who your mother was. As for what happened after that he brought us here to Kanoa and helped create a new identity for my wife and I and he sent a team to Snow Country to warn the king of his brother's plan. Unfortunately Dotu took the small info that the ninja had recovered and created a weaker version of what my wife and I created that he called Snow Armor and while the team was there to warn the king Dotu men attacked killing the king. As far as I know the team leader on that mission, Kakashi, and the king's daughter were the only survivors of the attack on the castle. The princess disappeared and is believed to be dead. Now my wife and I soon discovered we were going to be having a child of our own and we were happy but my wife passed away during childbirth and I have raised our child the best I can. Naruto felt dizzy and asked, so what is it you are telling me exactly, my head hurts. The man said still with his back to Naruto, what I am telling you Naruto is that what my wife and I invented is what I plan to give you, the original prototype armor. I had originally planned on letting what we created be lost forever because I felt the world would suffer because of it and I did not want the blood of innocence on my hands more than it already is for what Dotu created from my work but then I saw what happened to you and since I knew who you were and saw how you endured, even through all the hell you suffered that you would not use the prototype for evil. That you would use it to protect that which is precious to you so I began to research and plan and wait and now I am ready to give it to you. This gift will affect you the rest of your life and cannot be taken away. I ask you now, will you accept it and use it to show the world you are a hero, even if it cost you your life? Naruto who was leaning against the wall said, yeah. The man said, I am glad. Sleep well Naruto Namikas, son of Minato Namikas. Naruto last thought before he passed out was, Namikas, that's the name of the Yondai. The man saw Naruto pass out and he turned around and was wearing a gas mask. The man walked over and picked up Naruto and put him on the table in the middle of the room and said, forgive me. As he grabbed a scalpel off the table he was at and cut Naruto cloths off before he grabbed a new scalpel and placed it at Naruto's chest and slowly began to cut in. When Naruto awoke he groaned and opened his eyes and thought, why is it so dark? A female voice said, because you need a few moments for your brain to reboot. Please remain still until system check is complete. Naruto eyes got wide and asked, who's there? As suddenly he could see a light was above him and little lines with words he did not really know appeared in his vision and he asked, what is this? The female voice said, this is the tactical display you are seeing in front of you. As a diagram of armor appeared in the center of the screen and spun slowly before going in the corner and the voice said, this is the prototype body armor. You Naruto Uzumaki are now the operator of this armor. I am Eva, the electronic virtual avatar. If you have any question please just think your questions and I shall hear them since I am a part of you and so people do not think you are crazy. Naruto blinked and thought, like this. Eva said, yes. Now try and raise your arm slowly. Naruto moved his right arm and then his left and he said, yeah though I do feel like they are heavier. Eva said, your body will adapt quickly to the weight. Now try your legs. Naruto did and Eva said, good, now stand up and look at yourself in the mirror to your left. Naruto slowly sat up and then looked at himself and blinked and asked what's going on. I thought I was wearing some super armor but I don't look any different beside the fact I am wearing new clothes that are all black but they don't have any weapon holsters. Eva said that is because I have a built-in stealth feature. Think of it as a really advanced henge. To see what you are really wearing, say or think stealth shield drop. Naruto blinked and said stealth shield drop. As suddenly his body was replaced with red armor with gold face mask and gold in several other places. Naruto stepped back startled and he said, whoa. 
as he realized that was his reflection and asked, is that me? Eva said, yes. Naruto asked, how do I get it off? Eva said, the armor is now a part of you. There are seals all along your body that will conceal the armor so you may shower or other things of that nature however if I detect danger to you I will instantly unseal the armor and restore it to you. To seal it think seal armor and the armor will seal and to return the armor think restore armor. To restore the stealth shield think restore stealth. I advise not telling about me to anyone because they will try to learn the secret of it and take me away from you which will result in your death. Naruto frowned and asked, so what can you do? Eva said, I have many functions that I will be happy to teach you about over the next three weeks however I suggest you try sealing the armor and examine yourself so that you know about the other changes you have underwent. Naruto thought, seal armor. And the armor disappeared and Naruto saw black lines going from his neck and his hands and arms toward his chest and he noticed a bulge in his chest and he rubbed it and thought, what the hell. Eva said, that is one of the things I was referring to. Take off your shirt. Naruto pulled his shirt off and looked and saw a silver circle the size of both his fist put together in the middle of his chest with a blue light coming from it. There were also black lines running from his stomach to it and also lines going across his body all going toward it and he asked, what is that Eva? Eva said, that is the power device for the armor. The seal lines that are connected to it follow your chakra network to go over your entire body including the chakra from the QB inside your stomach. I will not bore you with all the technical details since you will not understand it but basically your QB and your chakra are now one. The chakra your heart creates to go to your body now goes directly into that device as well as the chakra from QB where both are now purified and controlled and directed across your body perfectly to allow you the maximum effect possible for someone as unique as you. Now your body is no longer in a constant war trying to beat the other chakra source so your control of your chakra should double. Once you learn water walking it will give you high chun and level control and if you learn kunai balancing then you will have jun and level control. Naruto eyes got wide and thought, cool. Eva said, I am happy you like it. Now if this device is destroyed you will die, so you must protect it when you are not wearing the armor. Naruto frowned at that and said, I see. So what now, how long was I asleep? Eva said, it has been one week since the preliminaries. You have three weeks left. Naruto screamed, three weeks, I need to train. Eva said, relax Naruto and I will help you. I am more than just armor. Naruto said, all right Eva, tell me what to do. Three weeks later Naruto walked into the Chunin exam stadium wearing the same black pants and black shirt he had when he woke up and he smiled and walked toward the other Genins. Shikamaru looked at Naruto and said, I see you got some respectable cloths Naruto though I don't see any weapon pouches, troublesome. And he thought, that's strange, why does his shadow show his hair as flat and curved while his hair looks like it is spiky like normal, as he narrowed his eyes. Naruto said, yeah, consider it one of several late birthday presents from my father. Genma who was chewing his senbon blinked and thought, him, did the kid learn who his parents are after all this time? I hope he did and that they didn't just abandon him. Shino said, you are different now Naruto. Your chakra is not as unusual as it once was. Naruto said, oh that. Let's just say my mind and body are truly at peace for the first time in a long time. Up in the stand Sakura looked at Naruto and Ino said, well he's not half bad now that he's out of the orange nightmare. Sakura said, I wonder where Sasuke-kun is and what's up with Naruto. He seems, different. I can't place my finger on it. A man smiled and thought, you look like a heavy burden has been lifted from your shoulders. I hope my gift makes up for the pain you felt. Your father would have been proud of you, also it would help my daughter to learn that the Hyuga is not invincible. The third looked at Naruto and thought, him, it appears Naruto had an interesting month off. I wonder why he came here unarmed, or did he? As he narrowed his eyes and tried to dispel any genjutsu Naruto might have on him but none showed up. The third read Shikamaru lips and then read Naruto and his eyes got wide a moment and thought, no, he could not know who his father is. It's not possible. And he motioned to the guard beside him and whispered, please bring Naruto here a moment. I would like to ask him about his teammate and instructor. The guard nods and disappears in a swirl of leaves and he said, pardon me a moment but the Hokage would like to speak to Uzumaki a moment about his missing teammate and instructor. Naruto walked over and the guard puts his hand on Naruto's shoulder and both disappear in a swirl of leaves and appear on the Hokage box. People in the audience started to whisper.
One said, did something happen to Sasuke, where a Kakashi and Sasuke, did that boy do something to the Uchiha? The third motioned to the guard and said, please give us a moment. Both guards left in a swirl of leaves and appeared across the way and Naruto said, so what's up, Gigi? If it's about Sasuke team and Kakashi team then I don't know anything since Kakashi told me I wasn't worth his time the day of the preliminaries. In fact I was wondering if after this exam if I could change to a different team, even if it's just temporary. I could fill in for Lee until he recovers or maybe to a team who is missing a member. The third frowned as he heard what Kakashi said and then heard Naruto's request and said, I will consider it Naruto, but if Kakashi did not train you for the month then who did? Naruto said, oh that, let's just say a debt to my father has been paid. The third looked confused and asked, your father, do you know who he is? I mean I never. Naruto snorts interrupting him and said, drop it Gigi. I understand now why you didn't tell me or anyone else who my dad was. Odds are his enemies would have killed me long before now or destroyed the village. I have had a lot of time to think it over and I realize you did the right thing. I would have probably shouted to the world my dad's rank equaled yours in this village but right now I don't care. He died so suddenly he probably didn't leave me anything but what I would like to know is if my mother is still alive or did she leave me anything and who she is. The third frowned and said, her name was Kushina Uzumaki and she died shortly after giving birth to you from complications. They were humble people who just respected their own privacy. What money they had for you I spent over the years for you and any scrolls or anything else they left for you would be in possession of your godfather Jiraiya of the Sanon. His duties keep him away from the village for up to a year at a time and he could not take care of you on the road so he sends money to help and he plans to take you as his apprentice when you are strong enough for what he has to teach you. I am sorry there is not more I could tell you or give you. Naruto said, it's no problem Gigi. I am glad to finally learn that they didn't just abandon me or hate me for QB. Him, that's odd. There is something wrong with this guy who is coming up the steps. His skin is dead. The third's eyes got wide a moment and thought, so that is your plan Orokimaru, and said, well thank you for informing me about your teammate and sensei Naruto. I wanted to wish you luck today and hope you do well and thanks for the advice. I am ready. Naruto saw the Kazekage walk up and saw the look on the Sandime's face and said, take care Gigi, as the two guards reappeared and one went to reach for Naruto who simply walked off the balcony and the Sandime and both guards ran over and looked at Naruto who was falling to the ground below. Several people were shocked and Sakura screamed, Naruto, as she saw him fall past. Right as he was about to hit the ground something caused the dirt to fly around, covering the area and out of the dust Naruto walked toward the other Genin and said, Sasuke's picking up on Kakashi sensei bad habit it looks like and will probably be three hours late. If that happens does he get disqualified for wasting the time of all of our guests or does he get special treatment? Genma said, everyone is treated the same in these exams kid. Naruto said, right, tell me that in three hours. So are we ready or what? I got two models for the gay pedophile weekly to deal with before I face the winner of Shino and Shikamaru. Neji glared while a few people snickered and Shikamaru muttered, troublesome. Tamari said, what makes you so sure you will live to make it to the third round? Naruto shrugged and said, trade secret toots. I can make it to the third round without trouble. In fact, not only will I make it to the third round, but when I defeat you I will embarrass you for what you did in the preliminaries. Tamari snorts and said, what, she your girlfriend or something? With the way you swore on her blood to avenge the Hugo girl the other Hugo beat I figured she was your girlfriend. Of course there is that weak pink haired slut who you also cheered for that could be your girlfriend, but I guess that means leave Kanoiki easy. Naruto said, hardly babe. Women of Kanoa have a class that other women can only dream to reach and they hold themselves to standards a dirt rubber like you would never be able to claim to have. As for being my girlfriends, nope. They're all leaf ninja and we watch out for our own and anyone who threatens Kanoa and her people will have to go through me, and even QB was fucked when he met me. I was born to protect Kanoa. As Naruto and Temari talk Genma had did hand seals and made it where everything that was said would be amplified for all to hear. Several women blushed when Naruto said they held themselves to higher standards and then several ninja looked at Naruto with a little respect when he said they took care of their own and most of the people paled when they heard him talk about Kyuubi but a few more respected him after that statement, if only a little. 
Damari was seething at this and Genma who was smirking said, well as much fun as it was to hear you both verbal battle each other, that's not what we're here for. Naruto said, have to keep our visitor entertained since Kakashi team and Sasuke team will probably be three hours late like Kakashi always is. Genma glared and said, quite you. Now as I was saying the Chunin selection exam now begins. The first match is between Neji Huga and Naruto Uzumaki. Would everyone else please leave the arena floor? Tamari shot a glare at Naruto as she walked away leaving Naruto and Neji in the middle of the ring with Genma. Genma said, now the rules are the same as before. You both will fight until your opponent is unable to continue or until I declare a winner and if you continue to attack after I stop the match I will deal with you personally. Now the first match, begins. Naruto looked bored as he slowly began to walk toward Neji making everyone blink and Neji said, you are fated to lose this match. A dead last like you could never hope to defeat a prodigy like me. Naruto yawned as he kept walking and said, yeah, 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 I'm sexy and you want to see me naked. Making several people spit out the drinks. Hanata eeped as she passed out and Kiba was rolling on the floor laughing. Sakura slapped her head and said, Barker. Tenten was stunned and thought, oh boy, he's fucked. The man who helped Naruto was choking on his soda and thought, oh god, that was priceless. Neji activated his eyes and Naruto put his hands in front of his crotch and said, do you mind? I'm straight, making more people burst out laughing. Hyashi thought, the boy has the gall to insult the Huga clan. Neji said, you are within my range of. Naruto interrupted him and said, peeping. Neji glared and charged toward Naruto and said, 2 palm, 4 palm, 8 palm, 16 palm, 32 palm, 64 palm strike, with a smug look on his face that soon frowned and he looked at Naruto who yawned after the attack and he asked, what, was that supposed to do something? Neji asked, how? I know I hit all 64. How? As he was wide-eyed. Naruto smirked while Neji was still stunned and grabbed him by the front of his coat and Neji finally recover and began to hit Naruto with palm strikes in the face and chest and Naruto slowly lifted Neji off the ground until he was a foot off the ground and Neji screamed, why, dot are, my, attacks, dot not, working. Naruto drawn back his hand and said as he started to slap Neji across first the left cheek and then the right and then the left and so on and so forth with each slap he said, how, dare, you, beat, up. Hanata like, that, you, jack, ass, you, are, nothing, but, an, abusive, ass, hole, who, attacks, defenseless, woman, when, they, can't, even, stand, up. If, that, is, what, you, call, a, prodigy, then, I, am, glad, I, am, a, dead, last, as he drawn back his fist and punch Neji in the face and knock her back about twenty feet. Everyone was stunned seeing Neji literally being bitch slapped. Neji slowly stood up and winced as he rubbed his hand across his face when the Naruto he had been fighting suddenly exploded knocking Neji back into the wall, knocking him out. Across the field where Naruto had landed earlier was another puff of smoke and the real Naruto was revealed. Genma blinked and looked back and forward and said, winner Naruto Uzumaki. Everyone was stunned and Naruto buffed his fingers against his chest and said, that was too easy as he walked over to where the other contestants were. Tenten blinked as everyone began to cheer and thought, he, dot one, but how? Genma thought, bunch and bakua but how did it survive all those strikes? Hyashi Huga thought, what was that? It was not originally a bunch and bakua. It originally was a kuch bunch and so how did it change without anyone noticing as well as ta, it can't be, as he looked at Naruto with his bloodline activated and thought, the Kijbunshin absorbed the chakra from Neji's attack to power up before it exploded, but if that is what really happened then how did he do it? Several ninja around the arena had come to the same conclusion each looking at Naruto with a little praise. The Sandime thought, very impressive Naruto. You will have to tell me how you learned such a jutsu since no one in Kanoa could do that. There is that medical jutsu the Genin on Kabuto team used but it can only absorb through direct contact with the skin and burns the amount absorbed equally making it where he would not have been able to make the clone explode. The Kazekij said, that is a most impressive technique Hokage Sama. I was not aware of any such jutsu like that existed. The Sandime said, nor was I. I wonder how he came across it. The Kazekij said, perhaps we will find out later. Down in the arena floor Genma said, would Sasuke Uchiha and Gara please come to the arena floor? 
Gara sand Shushin to the arena floor with his arms crossed and Genma looked around and Naruto screamed, you might as well wait. I told you before he would be three hours late because Kakashi is always three hours late. If you want I can fight him. Shikamaru said, troublesome blondes. Tamari glared and said, shut up both of you. Naruto chuckled and Shikamaru asked, so how did you do that Naruto? I mean how were you able to absorb Neji Chakra to cause that clone to explode? Naruto shrugged and leaned against the wall. Genma frowned and thought, I can't extend his time because everyone heard me say nobody would get special treatment. The third thought, Kakashi. I have no choice. With Naruto's statement before the match about getting special treatment that was heard by some of the audience and his statement just now the feudal lord is going to demand an answer why I change the rules for him, and with Orokimaru here I have to keep the Sharingan out of his hands. And he stood up, walking to the edge of the balcony and said, honored guest. Since Sasuke Uchiha has not shown up for his match and dishonored himself, the village, and you he will lose the chance at promotion in the exams. The Kazekage said, surely we could extend him some time since I wanted to see his match. The third said, I realize that and I do have a plan so please wait. As he turned back to the audience who were starting to get loud and he said, now since so many of you have come to see him fight I have decided that he will fight the winner of the exam but will not be allowed to be promoted. As he turned and sat back down. The Kazekage thought, this is bad. I wanted Sasuke here where my men could make sure he did not die in the invasion. I will have to hold it off until he arrives. Genma down below said, winner Gara. Gara glared at Genma and Shushin back to the balcony and Temari frowned and Kankuro whispered, what should we do? I can't fight because I have to save it for the plan. Genma said, would Shino Abaram and Kankuro please come to the arena floor? Kankuro said, I forfeit. Making several people boo. Naruto, Shino, and Shikamaru looked at the soon again and Naruto said, Shino, Shikamaru, can I talk to both of you for a second? As he walked over to the corner. Shikamaru and Shino both walked over and Naruto said, I don't know what's going on but when I was talking with the old man earlier I noticed something wrong with the Kazekage. All the skin on his face was dead and I don't mean worn out or anything like that, I mean it was dead and starting to decompose. Shino said, my bugs don't like the chakra of Gara. It is like yours used to be Naruto. Naruto eyes got wide and Shikamaru said, what should we do? Something doesn't feel right about this. Naruto said, looks like it's time for your match Shikamaru. Shikamaru nods and said, I forfeit. Making everyone in the crowd boo and Naruto asked why. In a hiss voice. Shikamaru said, if there is something going on here then I will need my chakra later so I will conserve it. Are you sure you can beat Gara?" Naruto said, yeah, but I don't know how good I will be after that match. Shikamaru looked at Shino who said, you take care of Gara, I will take care of Kankuro and Shikamaru will take care of Temari if things really do go wrong here. Naruto said, right, I don't like this but I got the feeling things are very wrong here. As Temari made it back to the balcony Temari screamed, why did you forfeit you lazy bum? Shikamaru said, simple troublesome woman. Leaf Ninja watch our own. You cross the line with one of ours so one of ours will cross the line with you. Right Naruto. Naruto said, yeah Shikamaru. I just wonder if she will even get to me when Shino lets his bugs go on her. As he jumped over the rail and hit the ground hard creating a small crater about five feet wide. Up in the stand Eno screamed, what is that lazy bum doing? He could beat that sand bitch. Sakura shook her head and said, it has to be male egos. Asuma narrowed his eyes as he heard Shikamaru deceleration and he said, something's going on here. He didn't quit to let Naruto deal with her, he quit to conserve his chakra, that Kankuro kid did it as well. You think they know something we don't, as he looked at Kurenai beside him. Kurenai said, I agree. Look at Shino's jacket. He has uncuffed his sleeve so he can release his hive faster and they are standing where they can see the two Genin from Suna, they must know about the possible attack today and suspect Suna as she started to look around the area at each of the ninja from Suna in the crowd. Shikaku and Shibi both narrowed their eyes at their sons and reached the same conclusion, Shibi began to send bugs down the arm of the chair toward the Suna nins to drain them of their chakra. As both Naruto and Gara stood across from each other Genma said, I hope you both are ready, fight, as he jumped back. Gara said, mother said you strong. Mother wants your blood. 
as the Korkon Gara gourd popped out and onto the ground and soon sand started to fly out of his gourd and circle around Gara. Naruto waited until the sand suddenly lunged at him as he saw it had done against Lee and he quickly raised his right arm and an explosion hit the sand that was charging toward Naruto and Naruto was on the move running toward the walls of the arena. Gara, who had momentarily stopped his attack from the explosion sent his sand out after Naruto who was now sticking to the wall and as the sand started to reach up to grab him Naruto raised his right arm again and a slight glint was reflected and a few people saw a senbon needle heading toward Gara while Naruto was running full speed across the wall with the sand chasing him when an explosion hit where Gara was standing and the sand stopped and ran back toward Gara. Everyone looked at Gara as the smoke from the explosion cleared and saw the sand armor around him repairing itself while Gara was whispering to himself. Naruto glanced and thought, you were right Eva. His sand attacks would withdraw to protect Gara when an immediate threat is present. Those rocket senbon needles are good but it appears that he has a second defense that I didn't really know about and was able to save him. What do you suggest? Eva said, according to sonar scans there is a pipe 20 yards east of your position that has water in it. I will target the spot on your HUD and once you have the water you can use that jutsu. Naruto saw a marker appear on his vision and he saw the sand was charging him again so he started to run around the wall with the sand chasing him again and when he was across from them he raised his right arm again and another senbon fired from his arm though to everyone three feet away or more it appeared as if it just appeared out of thin air and flew across the stadium hitting the wall and caused the wall to blow open with water spraying lightly out of the wall. Up in the audience stand Eno asked, how is he making those explosions Sakura? Sakura said, I don't know Eno. A voice that caught their attention from a few seat back said, exploding senbon needles, as both girl looked and saw Tenten. Eno said, hey, you're that girl from the exams. Tenten said, and you're both the banshees who had more of a cat fight than a ninja fight. Sakura said, so you know how Naruto is doing that then. Tenten said, I know part of it. I saw them as they flew but what I don't know is how he is launching them or even carrying them since he is not throwing them and I don't see any weapon pouches. He might have them under a genjutsu but I don't think so since I have not been able to dispel one. Naruto smirked as he jumped off the wall he was running on and began to flash through hand seals and said, hidden mist no jutsu, as the water began to quickly form a mist that covered the entire arena floor. Gara was looking around for Naruto and he had the sand begin to form a ball around him. Above the fog an eye of sand appeared in mid-air. Naruto who was hiding in the fog thought, what now? Eva said, radar has picked up an object floating in the air above the mist. Based on the display I believe it is a viewing orb of some kind to spy on you. I believe destroying it would be beneficial. Naruto nods and thought, do you have the location of Gara? Eva said, switching to inferred and ultraviolet. The HUD screen Naruto was looking out switched from normal to red and purple overlapping each other and Naruto saw two shapes with one being inside a dome and Naruto thought, that must be him. Do you think that can piece that shell? Eva was quiet for several seconds and said, using a 40% charge should work. Naruto glanced at the power reading in the top right corner and saw it slowly increasing from 60% and he frowned and thought, but that means I have to lose my cloaking shield. Eva said, correct. Naruto sighed and thought, do it. The cloak around Naruto dropped revealing him in his armor and Naruto raised his left arm toward where the dome was in the mist and held his palm up as a blue jewel in the glove started to glow with chakra. Everyone tensed as they felt massive chakra beginning to build. The third tensed as he felt this as did the kazekage. Naruto thought, Eva, as soon as you have enough power to restore the cloak do it as he saw the power reading on the side decreasing down to 20% left and Naruto jerked his wrist that he was holding up and a blue shot wave of chakra shot out of the jewel. Gara floating I saw the chakra heading toward Gara shell and the sand around the shell began to thicken as the shock wave struck the shell and explosion rocked the entire stadium blowing dust and dirt into the area and blowing most of the mist away. As the dust began to clear two figures could be seen in the dust cloud but nobody could see anything about the two. Finally the head of Gara could be seen which was halfway covered in sand and his eye looking dull. As the smoke began to clear all anyone could see was blue light shining through the dirt until the light dissipated and the body of Naruto was seen standing there panting and he said, note to self, dot get more range for 40% and reinforce my arms with chakra to withstand the kickback, as he fell to one knee panting holding his left shoulder. Genma looked at the two and thought, just what the fuck was that? 
Gara looked down and he touched his chest that was bleeding and asked, what is this, is it, my blood? As he grabbed his head and the sand began to cover his entire body. The ground began to vibrate as the dirt began to slowly spin and Naruto said, that can't be good. As suddenly a huge hand of sand began to form and tried to close around Naruto who said, shit. As he crouched down and jumped in the air quickly with the hand shooting after him. In the crowd the Suna ninja were beginning to get worried when Gara screamed out about his blood. Tamari and Kankuro both looked on with worry for Gara. Up in the cage box the Sandime looked at the Kazekage who looked at him and one of the Suna guards went to move forward to kill the guard of the Sandime when suddenly something blew through the floor intercepting the kunai that was heading for the guard and everyone looked and noticed Naruto who was panting and he said, look out. And suddenly the entire flooring broke apart as the Kazekage was sent flying into the air as the huge fist of sand came flying through the floor and each of the ninja quickly jumped away with Naruto beside the hockage. At that moment all hell broke loose. Down on the floor the body of Shikaku was forming with the arm already formed. The Sandime who landed on a piece of the now ruined cage box asked, are you alright Naruto? Naruto said, yeah but I don't know how many more of those sand fist I can take. I'm going to see if I can lure Gara outside the village to try and keep people from being hurt. The Sandime frowned and said, are you sure Naruto? Naruto said, trust me. As he jumped into the air and to the shock of the Sandime Naruto hovered over the still forming sand demon and he raised his right wrist and ten senbon launched out of it hitting the sand making it explode drawing attention from the yellow eyes that had now formed. Naruto said, oi, ugly, follow me, as he began to fly away from the village backwards. Shikaku who had now finished forming with Gara, awake on top of its head and he screamed, I shall have your blood for mother, as he began to chase Naruto slowly destroying a section of the stadium wall. Naruto saw Gara sitting on top of the sand body and then saw as several explosion rocked around the village and thought, if I can take out Gara, I can't help the village, but I guess I have no choice. Eva, I am going to hit the head of that thing with every ounce of controlled chakra I have left. When I hit the ground seal all armor and I will use my regular chakra. Good thing we found out that the guy who gave this to me didn't want me dying by running out of power huh? Eva said, I understand and will work on recharging the power cell as quickly as possible. After that what are your orders? Naruto said, when fully recharged restore stealth shield and armor. Eva said, Roger, 12 minutes from deactivation till full recharge. Don't die in those 12 minutes. Diverting all power to hand thrust cannon. Naruto felt his speed dropping as he saw Gara and the sand demon getting closer and he started to lose his thrust to keep to the air as his armor appeared and he pointed his left arm at the head of Shikaku and Eva said, now. And Naruto snapped his wrist and the glowing jewel. In his left hand fired a massive ball of chakra that was over 40 feet wide at the head of Shikaku blasting the head into billions of pieces as Gara lost the body that was holding him in the air the sand construct of Shikaku quickly began to fall apart as Gara fell toward the ground below some sand caught up with him and began to protect him however as he hit the ground he hit a tree he had broke as Shikaku and a branch went through his side just and stuck through him until over five feet of it was sticking out covered in blood. Shikaku inside of Gara faced with trying to get revenge or survive quickly began to try and keep Gara alive. Naruto after he fired the shot recoiled and began to spin uncontrollably and he bounced against several branches until he hit the ground hard. As the armor disappeared Naruto head was seen bleeding from smacking against the armor during the fall as he moaned, oh, before he passed out. When Naruto awoke a little later he groaned and thought, oh, my body, as he went to push himself off the ground and screamed out, oh fuck my arm as he instantly grabbed his left arm and began rolling trying to keep any and all pressure off it. After several minutes he finally got enough control to slowly sit up and he moved his knees under him and slowly stood up wincing while he still held his left arm. He looked around and saw a path through the tree limbs that were broken and he thought, now I know how a pinball feels. Eva, you there? Eva voice said, yes. Naruto winced and thought, can you be a little quieter? My head is killing me. Eva said, is this better? In a quieter voice. Naruto thought, yeah, so what's the status and how long was I out? Eva said, it has been 4 hours since your fight with Gara, and currently you are only at 25% power total. Naruto blinked and thought, run that by me again. I got the 4 hour part but what do you mean I am only at 25%? I should be fully recovered by now. 
Eva was quiet for several moments and said, based on my scans of your body over the past three weeks I have a several explanation that could be correct but I am unable to determine which is true at the moment but all seem to point at one thing. You are not receiving any chakra from the QB. The two most promising explanations are that either the QB somehow is able to stop his chakra from being sent to you or something is blocking the QB chakra from entering your system. Naruto frowned and looked around and thought, and you only discovered this now. Eva said the reason I was not able to identify this problem before was because your chakra system was already loaded with large amounts of QB chakra. Over the past three weeks you have been slowly using what was in your system originally before receiving me and it has taken till now to use it all up however this does bring some good news. Naruto thought, I don't see how anything right now could be really good new with as much pain as I am in now. No fox chakra means my healing is slow which is why I am so damaged. Dot how bad am I right now anyways? Eva said, your entire left arm is shattered into 20 pieces and your left shoulder is disconnected. You have three cracked ribs and a concussion. Naruto sweat drop and thought, and the good news. Eva said, now that all of the fox chakra is out of your coils only purified controlled chakra will be in your coils which will increase your control. Naruto shook his head and winced and said, add a crick in my neck to that list. Which way is it back to the village and where is Gara? Wait a minute, where is the armor Eva? As he looked at himself and noticed the power cell under his shirt. Eva said, due to your injuries I believe turning on the armor would only cause more injury at this time however I can activate the chest armor to hide the power cell if you would like. As for Gara, he should be a mile east of your location and the village is two miles south of that. Naruto thought, give me what you can on the armor because I don't want to reveal it if I can. Naruto saw the armor appear and then cloak on his chest and he winced and thought, good call on the armor Eva. Hold off on any more until I can get my arm and head checked. As he began to walk east very slowly. 20 minutes later Naruto saw a huge field of sand and he looked around and saw Gara sticking with a tree limb through his side and he winced as he saw the blood that had ran down it and dried and Naruto said, oi, you dead. Gara groaned a little and Naruto said, not dead. Just hanging her. Gara tried to turn his head and he asked, have you come to kill me? Naruto saw Gara looking at him and said, no, but if you stay like that too long you will die. Gara said, mother has said the same thing but is unable to get me down without causing me to bleed to death. Naruto blinked and said, you talked a lot about your mother. Where is she? Gara was quite a moment and said, mother is inside me. Mother has been with me since father sealed mother into me. Naruto eyes got wide a moment and softened and said, you're a Jinchuriki, aren't you? You have a demon inside of you. Gara said, yes. Ichibi no Shukaku. Naruto said, I know how you feel Gara. I have the QB no Kitsune in me. Dot the pain, it hurts to see those looks and hear their words. To always feel alone. As he looked into Gara eyes. Gara asked, if you really do have the QB in you, why do you not just kill them all and prove your existence? Naruto walked slowly over and sat down beside the limb Gara was on and said, because it would never change anything and would not ever prove my existence as me. It would only show people that I was QB instead of Naruto Uzumaki. Besides, no matter how strong QB or Shukaku are we are stronger than they are after all they are our prisoners. We are in charge of them so we are the stronger of them. If we die they die but if they die we don't die. They need us to live but we don't need them. Gara sat there thinking for several minutes and said, how are you stronger than Kyuubi because I am weak to Shukaku. If I go to sleep he devours my soul. How can I become stronger? Naruto winced as he shifted his left arm and said, find something that is precious to you. You sibling, your village, your friends and protect them with everything you have. Only when you protect what is precious to you can you ever find true strength Gara. Someone very wise and very strong once told me that and I honestly believe it. A voice Naruto recognized said, well said Naruto. Naruto turned and saw the Sandime walking toward him with four Anbu and said, hey Gigi. This is Gara. he's a Jinchuriki also but he said he can't ever go to sleep or Shukaku eats his soul. Think you might be able to help him. The third looked at Gara and said, I will see what I can do. You are the youngest son of the Kazekage right? Gara said, yes. The third said, I hate to tell you this but it appears that Suna was tricked into attacking our village because we found the face of your father peeled away and left on the ground after the battle. We believe Orokimaru killed him. 
Your village and the sound village have both fled but your siblings are here and they are currently in jail until we can get this mess figured out. Are you willing to surrender so we can get you some medical care and I can have a look at your seal? Gara looked at Naruto and Naruto said, trust him Gara. He's one of my precious people and if you want you can be one also. Friends. Gara said, I have never had friends before. Naruto said, well you got one now, how about it? Gara said, very well but my sand is not completely under my control. Shukaku is screaming for me to kill you all right now. The third turned and said, search the village and find Jiraiya and bring him here. Hurry. The Anbu left and Naruto said, can Jiraiya help Gara Gigi? The third said, if anyone can he can. After all he trained your father. Naruto smiled and said, then maybe he can fix mine also. For some reason QB Chakra cut off from me right now, it might have been when that snake guy hit me in the forest of death in the stomach before I passed out now that I think about it. The third frowned and said, let me see you seal Naruto. Naruto reached for his shirt and said, oh shit. Dot can we wait until later, somewhere more private. The third narrowed his eyes and asked, does this have something to do with why you could fly? Naruto said, um, yeah. I was told not to show anyone because people will try and figure it out which would result in me dying. Some kind of failsafe I think is what Eva called it. The third asked, who's Eva Naruto? Naruto said, um, let's just say that I have a voice in my head now but it's not QB, hell, she's not even really alive either for that. The third frowned and said, very well but I want to hear everything later Naruto. Naruto said, okay, can you quiet down a little though? I got a concussion, my left shoulder's dislocated, my left arm is shattered into 20 pieces and I have three cracked ribs. The third frowned and said, I will have to get you to the hospital then. Naruto said, no please, no hospital. I can't take the chance someone finds out about this. The third frowned and was about to speak when all four Anbu returned with Kakashi and Jiraiya. Naruto looked at Kakashi and frowned as he looked away and his eyes dulled. The third saw this and asked, what are you doing here Kakashi? I don't remember requesting you. Kakashi said, I was with Jiraiya when the Anbu informed him that you were here with Naruto so I came to check on my student. The third said, he is being taken care of so you may go and help with the cleanup. Now. Naruto winced as he grabbed his head and Kakashi frowned and glanced at Naruto and left. The third waited a few minutes and said, he's gone now. Jiraiya glanced at Naruto and at Gara and asked, what do you need sensei? I was on my way to do some research. The third said, I need you to look at Gara here's seal. He is the Jinchuriki of the Ichibi and it appears that the seal is unstable so for the safety of the village I need it controlled before I can get him medical help. Jiraiya joking mood changed and said, all right. Let me see you seal kid. Gara looked at Naruto and Naruto said, if Gigi says H is okay then I trust him Gara. Besides, he is my godfather. Jiraiya glared at the Sandime who said, he already knew who his father was before today so I had to inform him about his mother and you. He won't tell anyone so don't worry. Jiraiya sighed and said, we can talk later kid. As Gara Sand receded off his body and Gara pulled his shirt to the side to show the seal on his chest. Naruto said, don't worry about it. At least you had a good reason to not be here for me and sent money so I could live unlike Kakashi team who thinks I am not worth his time. Jiraiya face turned to a scowl and said, I think I will have a few words with him later sensei. The third said, I will as well. Do you remember anything that pale-skinned man said when he hit your stomach Naruto? Jiraiya who was looking at the seal on Gara chest listened in and Naruto said, let me think a minute. After I was ate by that giant snake and used Kajbunshin to make it explode I ran to where Sasuke and Sakura was. When I got there Sasuke was shaking and threw our scroll to the snake guy saying he would give it up if he let us live. I could tell the guy was going to kill us so I took the scroll and called Sasuke a coward and asked what was to keep him from killing us after he got the scroll. The snake guy said that he was surprised I survived his pet and he attacked me and I blanketed the area with Kajbunshin and I destroyed three mud clones of him before he decided to use this big snake that tried to eat Sasuke team and Sakura but I jumped in front of them pissed and crushed the snake's skull with a kunai in my fist. Um, after that the snake guy used his tongue to hold me in the air by my neck and his fingers glowed different color and he said something about five star but I didn't hear the rest because it hurt and I passed out. 
The Anbu who were nearby were shocked with what they heard and the third said, I see. I think I know what he used on you and when we get back to my office we will take care of it. Jiraiya said, I can take care of it after I finish with this kid here. It appears whoever did his sealing did a fucked up job on purpose. They put a three star seal with a berserker seal. I can fix it but it will hurt a few minutes and you will pass out afterwards but you won't have to worry about the demon anymore. Gara said, I would appreciate it, because I need to protect my siblings and my home. Naruto said, when you get back since you should try and be Kazekage so that way when I become Hokage our villages can be friends again and we won't let anyone trick us again. How's that sound? Gara was silent a few moments as Jiraiya worked on the seal and said, yes. I will become Kazekage so I can protect my friend and his precious people. The third smiled at this and said, I think that's the fastest peace negotiation I have ever seen. Don't you agree Jiraiya? Jiraiya said, no, the fastest was when I asked Sunit Haim out for drinks and she sent me flying with her super strength. The third chuckled and asked, will you ever learn? Jiraiya said, never. You ready kid? Gara nods and Jiraiya fingers glowed and he slammed them into what he drawn on Gara chest and Gara screamed out before he passed out and Jiraiya waited a moment and said, he's okay but the sand that is keeping him from bleeding to death is falling away so you better get him to the hospital and fast. The third said, Anbu, take him to the hospital for immediate care and do not leave his sight for anything until I come for him. No one else, is that understood. All four nod and they cut the limb that was holding him in place and shushing away. The third said, meet us in my office, as he placed his hand on Naruto's shoulder and Naruto winced and the third switched shoulders and said, sorry. Before they shushined away. Jiraiya looked around and shushined away also. When he arrived in the Hokage office he asked, so what's up? The third looked at Naruto who asked, are you sure that no one can see or hear anything because I can't risk anyone finding out. I don't even know if I should show you but I got no choice since I need help. The third closed the window blinds and Jiraiya locked the door and the third sent Chakra to a seal on the desk and the room glowed a moment and the third said, all right, this room is secure now Naruto. What's going on and how were you flying? Jiraiya blinked and Naruto said, Eva, stealth shield deactivate. The sand diamond Jiraiya blinked when suddenly a set of armor appeared on Naruto chest and Naruto said, seal armor. And the armor disappeared and the third and Jiraiya eyes both narrowed as they saw something bulge on Naruto chest under his shirt. The third asked, what is that Naruto? Naruto reached for his shirt and winced as he pulled it off and both men gasped and Jiraiya moved over and asked, what happened to you? As he looked at all the seal lines running along Naruto body and into the device that was built into Naruto chest. Naruto said, the day of the preliminary after Kakashi. Told me I wasn't worth his time I was pissed and said something about finding a way to beat Sasuke in the exams even if I had to use QB or something like that because I was so pissed and when I was leaving a guy pulled me into a hospital room and asked if I was really that pissed and felt I had to use the fox for people to see that I am not just a worthless piece of trash and since I was still pissed I said yeah and he asked if I had another option. One that could kill me if it failed would I take it and I told him yeah. He gave me a business card with a house address wrote on the back and told me to meet him there at 8. I did and he took me into the cellar and told me a story about how how he knew who my dad was and how dad had saved his wife and his life once when they ran away from snow country and how because dad saved them he sent Kakashi team to warn the king about his brother's betray. I don't really remember it all because I was getting really tired and my head was hurting as he talked and he told me how him and his wife created the original prototype for snow armor and how he wanted to give it to me before he told me that my dad was was the Yondai Minato Namikage and he called me Naruto Namikas before I passed out. When I woke up I was alone on a table in that room and a week had passed by and I had this snow armor which is both metallurgy or something like that and cyber, rebot something. I can't say those words either as he heard Eva in his head. The third said, metallurgy and cybernetic robotics. Naruto said, yeah, those words. The third frowned and asked, so what exactly is that thing in your chest Naruto? Naruto said, it's the power source for the armor and it also purifies both the Kyubi chakra and mine giving me more control over my chakra. Eva, the voice that explains all this stuff to me and also helps me with understand better said now that my body is completely clean of all the leftover QB chakra that all the rest of the chakra from QB and me will be the purified controlled chakra that will allow me to use jutsu better without wasting as much chakra. She taught me water walking and also that hidden mist jutsu in the past three weeks along with how to fly, 
how to use the exploding rocket Senban and we did a few test runs on the thrust cannon. The third asked, how come no one has reported to me about you using these? Naruto said, oh, that's easy. Once I figured out the basic of flying in about three hours in the woods behind the Hockage Monument I went back to Wave Country and visited Anari and his family. Tsunami a great cook and did you know they actually named their bridge the Great Naruto Bridge after me. I used 80% of my chakra going there but it only cost me 60% on the way back last night because I had learned water walking. The third frowned and said, you should have told me you were leaving Naruto and I could have sent someone with you. Naruto blinked and said, didn't your secretary give you my letter I know my, wait, how did I know my clone gave her that letter, as he rubbed his head. The third frowned and said, I see. I will do, as Naruto put his hands together several times wincing in pain before he got them in almost the right position and said, Kijbunshin no Jutsu. And two clones appeared and one looked sick and Naruto said, damn, now I am back down to 10%. You, the good one, go read something in a book real quick and dispel yourself. The clone walked over to the bookshelf and grabbed a book and opened it and the clone fainted going up in smoke and Naruto nose began to bleed and said, eewww, who wrote that crap? Who would want to read what Elaine and Carol did with John? Jiraiya said, hey Gaki, I wrote that, as he hit Naruto on the head making Naruto wince and rub his head and said, you wrote that perverted crap. Jiraiya said, yes I did. I am the author of the Ika Ika Paradise books. Naruto said, ah, you're the guy Kakashi jacks off to and why he is three hours late, making both adults sweat drop. Naruto said, anyways, it looks like anything a Kijbunshin learns goes back to the original. Dot why don't you use them to do your paperwork Gigi. The third blinked and blinked again as he hit his head on the desk and screamed, all that time, wasted, as he created two clones and had them began to read the scrolls on the desk. The third after he created the clones said, anyways Jiraiya, check the QB seal and those others and see what they do. Jiraiya nods and said, channel your chakra. Naruto did and Jiraiya said, well, you got a five star seal and I can fix that easy. Hold still. As he held his hand out and it glowed five colors before he slammed it over Naruto's stomach and Naruto screamed, shit, that hurt. As everyone saw the blue in the crystal on Naruto's chest turn red a moment before it turned pink and then blue and Eva said 20, 0 0.25, 0 0.30, 0 0.35%, dot the filter will not let any more through until your body creates more of your chakra, and Naruto said, well that's cool. I am up to 35% now but it won't let no more of QB chakra in until my body makes more of my own chakra. Jiraiya said, impressive work here. Whoever did this to you had put a lot of time and thought into it Naruto. They gave you an extra set of gates in your body to restrict the amount of QB chakra going into the filter at a time. They were not a seal master since they used so many basic seals to do what they done but I can see they wanted to help you as much as they could. Interesting. They put up several mental blockers also to keep you from being influenced by QB chakra should the QB ever try to break free. I would like to compare notes on a few things with whoever did this. What did you say his name was and what did he look like, as he looked at Naruto. Naruto said, he had brown hair and brown eyes and he is about as tall as Kakashi but he never told me his name. Just that his wife died giving birth to a daughter and that dad gave them new names and lives to hide them from the guy in snow country. The third asked, how are your injuries? Naruto said, my head is feeling a little better and my ribs are not hurting as bad by I can't tell anything in my arm. Jiraiya looked at Naruto's arm and said, sensei. Dot his arm is severely damaged. I don't think anyone here in Kanoa can fix it and it will never heal on its own. How did you break it so bad? Naruto said, the thrust cannon. I usually only use 5 or 10% when using it and I can blow up a tree at that much but when I was fighting Gara and Shukaku I used first 40% and then I used around 55% while in the air to blow Shukaku head off and it worked but then I crashed through some trees since I had no power left and hit the ground hard before passing out. If it wasn't for my armor though I probably would have died. The third was silent for a moment and said, Naruto, do you think you can travel? Naruto said, yeah but not flying or tree hoping. Why? The third said, first, for valor above and beyond the call of duty and for strategic thinking I promote Naruto Uzumaki to the rank of Chunin and now you are Jiraiya new apprentice. I am giving you both an S rank mission to track down Sunid and bring her back to Kanoa to become the god I'm Hokage and to also fix Naruto arm. 
Everything that was said here is now a secret to only the three of us and will remain so. Naruto eyes were wide hearing he made Chunin and then the god I'm part and started to say something when Eva said, don't do it. Just say thank you for your faith in me and you accept. Naruto thought, but why? Eva said, because you don't want them thinking you are a weak idiot but a respected ninja, right? The third and Jiraiya saw Naruto face change expressions several times and he sighed and said, thank you for your faith in me and I accept the promotion of Chunin and I accept the mission. When do we leave Ero Sanin? causing the third to chuckle and Jiraiya to face plant. Jiraiya said, don't call me that Gaki and we can leave as soon as you're packed. Naruto said, everything I own is on my back. Someone robbed me again while I was away so I don't have anything in my apartment beside tore up furniture. Jiraiya shot the third a glare and he said, right, well hide your, what should we call that thing? Naruto said, core, I should tell you both that if this thing is destroyed I will die. Eva, give me full armor except my left shoulder and arm. Both adults saw as Naruto body was covered in armor that was red and gold before it cloaked and Naruto said, damn, I only got 150 senbon left so I will have to get some more. Jiraiya asked, does it matter what kind of senbon? Naruto said, standard senbon. Somehow the launcher in my right wrist automatically engraves the seal and charges them when they are launched. I can only launch 10 a second though, causing both men eyes to go wide. The third asked, how many can you carry? Naruto said, 500. I think that is a fair trade-off for the shurikens and kunais I don't use anymore. I can hit a target at 100 yards within 2 inches at that distance. The third asked, is this Eva going to teach you anything else? Naruto said, not unless I spend some time in snow. Eva only knows 20 jutsu counting water walking and the hidden mist jutsu. The rest are snow jutsu since this armor was originally the prototype for snow country ninja to be able to better protect their home but that dotu guy had other plans. Luckily they didn't get all the info on this suit but only pieces from the guy who survived meeting dad. The third reached into a drawer and tossed Jiraiya a scroll and said, that is your chun and vest once you can put it on. Jiraiya, there will be no research on this mission. You are to find Sunid and get him healed. I received word from Weasel and he said they are starting to move and he will be making an inspection of the target soon. Jiraiya eyes were wide and said, I see, come on kid, we got a lot of things to do in a short amount of time. Naruto said, sure, as he followed in step behind Jiraiya. After they were gone the third deactivated the security seal and said, Anbu. Four Anbu appeared and he said, get me Shino Abaram, Shikamaru Nara, and Hataki Kakashi. The four nod and left in swirls of leaves as the third pulled out two more scroll like the one he gave Jiraiya. Jiraiya said, you know, we need to come up with a code name for you when you're not hiding like you are now in that thing. Naruto frowned and asked, like what? Jiraiya saw a picture of a man lifting weights and said, how about Iron Man? That will be it for this video if you want more comment down below, like, subscribe. And see you guys later.